60% of our planet has been consumed by the invaders. She is just a fucking retarded slut bitch. I will have to say, I'm wearing a Raylo t-shirt today. Sally's a 57% and Mary Sue. <laughs> <laughs> the big chungus moment. Yeah, get out my way, dude. Better start running too. Yeah, that's right. Get out of here. That control pod contains the energy source of the BFG 10,000. I'm loading it for you now. Thanks, Alfred. I'm telling you, he's on his way. I need you to. I'm right here, psych. <laughs> all right, all right. How do you work this thing? Okay. Uh, yeah, whatever. Let me just blow. Let me just blow shit up. All right. I love the noise it makes. <laughs> you can't just shoot a hole into the surface of the shipping community. Uh -huh, BFG 10,000 go. You know, uh, with the killing spree all over, uh, Mars is actually kind of boring. Hey, do you mind? I'm venting here. Wait a minute, who are you again? Did Amy steal Sally's personality in the Sonic comics? Amy Rose's new character, IDW. Oh, it's like they make themselves for me. Okay, whatever. I'll, I'll do a video on you. I swear, these Amy Rose simps never learn. Oh, whatever. At least I get the AdSense. Play the intro again. Yo, I had the jewel, I got some goals. I sold a little weed, but I could never sell my soul. And when I'm in LA, you find me out in Lil Toe. Come on, Boko, where my ramen? I'ma need another. Hey everyone, uh, finally, no more political videos. So, this video was going to come out, like, months ago, but a bunch of dumb shit happened, and you can probably guess what those things were. But finally, I'm back on my old shit, and this time, Twitter won't get mad at me for it. I hope. But anyways, there's this video that's been going around called Did Amy Steal Sally's Personality in the Sauna Comics? Amy Rose's new character, IDW. And obviously, I very heavily disagree with this video. Now, the good news is that this guy is not a total Sawn Amy fan brat. In fact, he seems pretty chill. And also, the, uh, the guy is subscribed to me, so I really can't hate him too much if he watches my content, so... But even then, no disrespect to Groovy K2000 or anything, but in my opinion, this is a take that I don't really like. So let's put aside the vitriol, let's put aside the anger, and let's have a conversation about this, like men. Let's get into it. Hey, rings on my finger like Sonic. Hey, them bitches flooded with diamonds. Hey. Amy Rose is one of the most iconic characters in the Sonic franchise. One of the greatest and most attractive characters ever thought of. If you've been following the series, you would know that Amy was originally introduced as Sonic's lover slash number one fangirl. It was pretty much her main trait. Yuji Naka, the original creator of Sonic the Hedgehog, stated on different occasions that Amy was meant to have a one-way relationship with Sonic. Hey, uh, real quick, please redo your lines when you stutter. I can tell you're insecure on the microphone, and this is more of a beginner thing than anything, but just a word of advice, when you stutter, in a video like this, just redo your line. It's better for the flow of the video. Yuji Naka stated on different occasions that Emmy was meant to have a one-way relationship with Sonic due to his carefree and speedy attitude. Therefore, for a long time, this is how Emmy was portrayed in the series whether it be the video games, the comics, or the TV shows. However, many are claiming that Sega changed her personality as of recent, and they're even saying that she's become more like Sally Acorn, who's another classic and iconic character in the Sonic franchise. While I don't think it's a one-to-one -one comparison, I do think that this statement pretty much rings true, especially in IDW. I mean, it really seems like Ian Flynn is trying to evoke the same chemistry. One of the main questions, though, is when did Amy change? Short answer, literally nowhere. And has Sega actually confronted themselves that she's changed? On the 21st of February in 2020, 
The official Sonic the Hedgehog channel uploaded a video called Sonic 101. Oh yeah, I forgot they pulled this one out of their asses. In the video, when it gets to the description of Amy, the narrator says this. Amy Rose has matured into an independent hedgehog with a strong sense of justice. Make sure to stay on her good side or you'll come face to face with her Pico Pico hammer. As he said, she's matured into an independent hedgehog with a strong sense of justice. And this is exactly my problem. I'll go more in depth into this later, but honestly, aside from from this out of nowhere marketing video, Amy Rose's personality is literally a light switch, and in my opinion, not even for the better. They could have developed Amy Rose's character over time or give her something or some reason to change, but nope, out of nowhere, she's just mature now. Okay, whatever. A description like this is a lot different from Amy's original description given by Yuji Naka. They've pretty much confirmed that Amy's changed in character and has matured. Confirmed with zero actual development whatsoever. You have to understand, Sonic Team does not do character development. You ever played Sonic Forces and realized just how unreactive Sonic is to everything around him? Yeah, that's Sonic Team character development. And I use that term very loosely. They didn't even mention her love interest for Sonic, which is what she was pretty much built upon. So. As you can see, Amy has officially changed in personality. In the worst possible way, they literally just said, oh, she changed, and didn't give her an actual arc or anything. They pretty much only changed her because people complained about her being annoying, and didn't bother to actually try and explore that. But why is it that people are complaining about it? Because she's not Amy Rose anymore. Don't get me wrong, I think Amy's old personality was fucking obnoxious, but her current personality is literally just woman. And why is it that they're saying that she's a clone of Sally Acorn? Because she's written like she's meant to replace the character. For some reason in IDW, Amy Rose is now a leader character, which if you know Amy Rose is an odd as fuck thing to do. Now all this is more of me just playing devil's advocate. I have a different issue with this personality change than just Amy is Sally now, but we'll get into that later. Well. Let's start off by defining who Sally is. This is sample text. Sample text. <laughs> Sally Acorn is an interesting character to talk about. She's not originally from the video games. She actually first appeared in the 1993 Sonic the Hedgehog cartoon, which most of us call Sonic Sadian. A show that is critically acclaimed by the nostalgia critic. The show was short lived though, only lasting 26 episodes. The reason I say that she's an interesting character to talk about is that she has an even greater prominence in the Sonic the Hedgehog comic book by Archie, which also started in 1993. Therefore, she has varying personalities due to multiple different writers in the comics. Uh, you're not right, but you're not wrong either. You're not wrong, but you're not right. What I mean by that is, Sally Acorn does have a very specific personality. She's a tough, strategic princess, and that's been consistent for years. There are some out-of-character moments here and there, but really, the core personality is there. It's like a superhero character. Yeah, they might have different interpretations, but the core personality is the same. And if it's not, then the writer has completely failed at writing said character. Sally's a character who's been bashed for a long time, being called a Mary Sue. Oh boy. Let's get something straight here. People who call Sally Acorn a Mary Sue are Son Amy fans, Bruh. who use it as a buzzword and don't even know what it means. The only reason Son Amy fans try to prove that Sally Acorn is a Mary Sue is because they're Son Amy fans and love their shipping way too much. But yet at the same time, they can't argue for shit. So when they find out about the existence of a character who has a long relationship with Sonic, they throw around baseless ad hominems in order to vent their anger, and slander a fictional chipmunk. So long story short, Sally Acorn is not a Mary Sue. So on Amy fan breaths are just stupid. No. Sally is known to be the leader of the resistance called the Freedom Fighters. In the world they live in, Robotnik has taken over the kingdom, and it's up to the Freedom Fighters to stop him and take their world back. First things first, being a leader does not make you a Mary Sue. If it were, then Nick Fury is automatically a bad character. Sorry, Sammy. This is the iPhone 3 Pro. Moreover, Sally's the princess of Knothole so she carries a big responsibility. Still doesn't make a character a Mary Sue. If it were, then sorry Wonder Woman, but you're a Mary Sue. However, she's down to earth and labeled as a tomboy. You see this in the comics as well, where she would rather have her hair cut low 
and she doesn't really like wearing princess-like clothes. Once again, a tomboy princess is not a Mary Sue. Otherwise, Kumatora from Mother 3 would be a Mary Sue. You can already see why people would label her as a Mary Sue. Uh, honestly, no, I really don't. Once again, if Sally Acorn is a Mary Sue on the very principle that she is a tough female princess, then Wonder Woman's a Mary Sue too. And furthermore, there are plenty of Mary Sues who aren't royalty at all. Look at the infamous fanfiction My Immortal. The main character, Ebony Darkness Dementia Ravenway, is 100% a Mary Sue, and yet, she's not royalty in the story. So, in all honesty, I really don't see how people could consider Sally Acorn to be a Mary Sue. Unless you're trying to find a literary trope to define her and attach to her like a straw man. You can already see why people would label her as a Mary Sue, but we can still look for more reason why that may be the case. But before we do that, we don't want to get sidetracked. This video itself is meant to be a comparison between Sally and Amy. It's important to see if they're both Mary Sues though because that will pretty much answer part of our question and resolve all the arguments people are having about the two characters. No, it really won't. If this video is about whether or not Amy Rose ripped off Sally Acorn in IDW, then what relevance is it that either one of them is a Mary Sue? If anything, that argument is a completely different one entirely. It might involve the same characters, but really, it's two different arguments. What we should be comparing is the similarities in how the two operate, and how the two talk and act, not on whether both of them are a Mary Sue or not. The only reason you would do something like that is if you have no knowledge of actual writing or anything. And the closest thing you've been to being inside of an English class is watching dramatic fanfiction readings on the internet. But based off what we've said so far, has Amy Rose become Sally Acorn? Well, Amy is not a princess, and Sally is, so we have to consider that. So guys, people have been calling Homefront a Call of Duty clone, but here is something we need to consider. Homefront has North Koreans in it, while Call of Duty doesn't have North Koreans in it. So therefore, Homefront is most likely not a Call of Duty knockoff. Sally also has a tomboyish style, while Amy still seems to dress the same. Furthermore, Homefront has White Castle in it. I don't see Call of Duty having White Castle in it. Listen up, soldier. It's Captain Bryce from Call of Duty Modern Warfare speaking, and I'm here to tell you about the sliders they have in White Castle. They're so cheesy, they literally come in your mouth. Oh no, soap! You didn't get the new cheesy slider from White Castle! The, the new f extra cheesy jalapeno slider from White Castle! Bravo 6, go into White Castle! But one thing to note is that they're both leaders of a resistance. Part of this issue is due to the game Sonic Forces, which has that villain wins, heroes try to take the world back type scenario that Sonic, Satyam, and the Archie comics already have. Amy was not the leader in that game, however, she is the leader in the new IDW comics, which contains stories that take place after the events of Sonic Forces. And that's something I want to note, she's a leader in the comics and not in the games. And while Sega wants nothing to do with Satyam in the Archie comics, Ian Flynn, in complete contrast, wrote for the Archie comics. So keep that in mind moving forward. She's become so much of a leader that she would turn down an offer to spend time with Sonic in favor of returning back to the, the Resistance. It's definitely a change in character, to say the least. And with no actual development whatsoever. There's no in-between or anything. Amy is just inexplicably changed. Now that we've briefly defined each character, let's dig a little deeper to see if they're truly similar. Deeper, you say? Let's see how this turns out, then. Sally had gone for years since being called a textbook example of a Mary Sue. By people who don't actually know what a Mary Sue is. If that's what most people think about her, then let's find out what the true definition of a Mary Sue is. Correction, not most. It's a vocal minority of people who don't know what they're talking about. And let's also see if this new version of Amy Rose applies to this. Um, why? This video is about comparing Sally and Amy as characters, not whether they're Mary Sues or not. This channel, IDR Labs, does several videos depicting which characters are Mary Sues, and they have their own index for it, so let's follow theirs. I'm also going to reference a journal from Shanaha T on DeviantArt, who really helped with finding evidence in relation to Sally, and followed IDR Labs' format, so credit to her for the sources. 
I'll link the journal in the description below. You know what? Actually, fun fact about this. After this video was released, Shanaha T called this guy out and said that Groovy K2000 didn't specify whether this was a critique or not. So, word of advice, you you may actually want to specify that. Unless of course you uh don't ask for permission. These are the seven categories. 1. Is she overpowered? No. 2. Is there an explanation for her abilities? What abilities? Three. Is she perfectly nice? <laughs> Four. Does she have a personality? Yes. Five. Is she instantly liked? Kind of hard to judge that since most of the characters knew her for their entire lives. I mean, they're all childhood friends, aren't they? Of course they're gonna like her. Six. Does she have wish fulfillment? No. And seven. Does she fail or feel embarrassed from time to time? She was turned into a robot once, yeah. Amy was first depicted as practically powerless in Sonic CD. She played the damsel in distress role. However, as the games progressed, Amy became one of the main strong characters, and this was before her change in personality. Her Pico Pico hammer is pretty ruthless. In shows like Sonic X, it can knock Eggman's entire ship back. I'm sorry, wasn't this video about how Amy Rose ripped off Sally Acorn or something? And not which one is a Mary Sue or not? This video is completely unfocused. This whole which one is a Mary Sue argument could be its own video. Why it's in a video called Did Amy Rip Off Sally Acorn IDW is beyond me. Still, it doesn't mean she can defeat any enemy. But since we're talking about the new Amy, she hasn't really shown any true signs of weakness yet. She's an exceptional leader and played a very important role in the Zomba arc, practically holding the resistance by her shoulders. Of course, she can still get overwhelmed and need support of others at times. Therefore, the answer is yes, she is overpowered, but mainly personality-wise. Huh? Do you actually know what overpowered means? Overpowered means way too fucking powerful. And I don't know about you, but a character who's a leader and only has a hammer as her weapon is not overpowered. And being able to fend off for yourself is also not a trait of being overpowered. If it were, then John Wick would be the Gary Stewist of Gary Stews. I'm gonna give her a 0 0.5 instead of the full one point because it's mainly based on personality that she's overpowered and not necessarily through her abilities. The fuck is that supposed to mean, overpowered through personality? Oh yeah, sorry, uh, Baby Yoda, your personality is too powerful. I mean, you don't have one, therefore your personality is overpowered. Sally is also a character that gets captured from time to time, but she is well known for being an excellent fighter and tactician. Not a Mary Sue trait, otherwise Batman would be a Gary Stew. She knows many martial arts techniques. My point still stands, not a Mary Sue trait. Her post-reboot version is also good with using swords. Once again, not a Mary Sue trait. The main character from My Immortal didn't use swords at all. She's very analytical and uses an AI named Nicole to help her. Not a Mary Sue trait. She can also use the Sword of Acorns, which is a very powerful weapon which can mess with reality itself. So yeah, she's pretty overpowered. Uh, no, she is not. <laughs> what? First of all, with the exception of the Sword of Acorns, every single trait you described puts her at most on par with the rest of the cast. But believe it or not, being smart and good at martial arts does not make you overpowered. You don't know what the fuck overpowered is, dude. And then there's the Sword of Acorns, which is less of a character trait of Sally and more of a Chaos Emerald like MacGuffin. Which, uh, uh oh, I guess Sonic's a Gary Stu because uh, he has the Chaos Emeralds that turn him super. Uh-oh, guys, Sonic's a Gary Stu now. Sonic gets one point. As we discussed before, Sega has told us that Amy has developed to be an independent person. Told us with no actual arc whatsoever. It seems more like an excuse than a reason. But they never really explain how. It would make sense for Amy to gain leadership skills due to the events of Sonic Forces but it's very glossed out and immediate. I think he's getting it now, guys. I think he's getting it. The comics also explain that Amy's become independent, but there's no depiction of her transformation. Yep, there it is. He's getting it. He's getting it, bruh. So the answer is no. In the Archie comics, Sally was said to be trained by multiple people to gain her martial arts skills. 
one of them being her mentor, Julila. But even still, it doesn't make up for her other abilities, which include her leadership and intelligence. What? Oh yeah, you have to explain every single ability, including intelligence. That totally wouldn't bloat the story or anything. Sorry, Caroline from Wolfenstein The New Order, but uh, you're a Mary Sue. She's just naturally capable. So the answer is, no, there isn't any real explanation for her abilities. But <laughs> you just said there was! In the Archie comics, Sally was said to be trained by multiple people. There isn't any real explanation for her abilities. It really doesn't matter if there is an explanation for only some of her abilities. There's still an explanation, and you just can't say, Oh, there's no explanation, because there clearly is one for at least some abilities. You can't just say, Oh, there are some explanations, but because intelligence isn't explained therefore she is a mary sue <laughs> what the fuck are you on dude this one's pretty easy once again if you were talking about the old amy she definitely had a meaner personality at least when it came to people who were trying to go after sonic but this is a new version of amy and this version of amy hasn't really shown any cases where she's been truly mean She's very supportive of her members at the Resistance, cheering them on and such. So, yes, she's perfectly nice. You see, this is why I don't like the whole Mary Sue test thing. You can take any side character and apply this to anyone. Oh, is this good guy side character perfectly nice? Oh, I guess they are. I guess therefore they're a Mary Sue, even though they're not even the focus of the story. Like I said before, Sally has had multiple different writers in the Archie comics, so her personality changes over time. In general, she's definitely not a pushover, but she's certainly nice to her friends. We see this in Sonic at AM, where she helps raise Tails, even giving him funny kisses. Yikes, uh, that certainly didn't age well. Sure, she's had a moment where she lashed out at Sonic for choosing Robotnik over her, but like I said, different personalities. We still kind of have to put it into play, though, if we're talking about her entire personality over the years. And she's nice enough to sacrifice herself for the world, causing her to become roboticized. Psh, sacrificing yourself for the world, what a goody two-shoes. The answer is yes. She is perfectly nice. You just brushed off the slap scene as, oh, different writers. You just can't brush that off, dude. <laughs> what is this video? It's a bit of a rough case for Amy. It's true that she's toned down her affection for Sonic, but that doesn't really mean that she has no personality at all. Her personality is just woman now. She's not some character that questions herself, asking questions such as, who am I, what am I? She knows who she is and what she has to do, and she definitely still has the cute and cheerful behavior when fighting robots. She also has some added sass as well. So, since she has a personality, I won't give her any Mary Sue points for that. Aw oh, yeah, sass. Nothing says good writing like Diet MCU. A lot of people may argue that Sally doesn't have a personality, and that she only plays the role of leader. I could say the exact same thing for Amy and how she only plays the role of woman. While this is somewhat true in the Sonic Set AM series, it's a bit different in the Archie comics. She goes through many emotional phases, mainly relating to her relationship with Sonic. This is a certified real trap shit. Making this much come ain't easy. Because Sally's a princess, you'd think she'll be instantly liked. And actually, this is the case in most scenarios, with people realizing she's a princess or attractive and warming up to her for that reason. Bruh. This is shown in the Archie Sonic issues, such as issue 20 where Jeffrey St. John was defensive against Sally, but lightened up after she revealed she was a princess. Once again, this isn't necessarily a Mary Sue trait. Being respected because you're a princess is a common thing. Otherwise, Princess Leia would be a Mary Sue. At the same time though, not many have liked her on first sight, technically. Therefore, I'll give Sally 0.5 points. <laughs> what do you mean, technically? Could you, uh, elaborate on that, sir? For those who don't know what wish fulfillment is, 
it's essentially the creator of the story making a story or artwork that addresses an outcome that the author wants for a character. No, it's not. According to this random website from this English teacher that I found online, wish fulfillment refers to something in literature that satisfies the conscious or subconscious desires of either the creator or the reader of a work. In other words, it's self-insertion. And in that case, neither Sally or Amy are wish fulfillment. Unless you count those uh, Saw and Amy fan fictions, which in that case... Uh, yeah, that's wish fulfillment. Something feels so wrong, feels so wrong. You might uh, want to use a different text, dog. I can barely fucking read that. Yes, she fails in the sense of not being able to save everyone. That much is visible in the Zomba arc where she couldn't save Cream's mother, Vanilla. So, zero Mary Sue points for Amy. We were helping. Yes, Sally has failed multiple times. Gentlemen, welcome to Dubai. Let's look at the final results. Amy is a 2.5 out of 7, which is 35% a Mary Sue. Sally is a 4 out of 7, which is a 57% a Mary Sue. They're 22% apart from being similar to each other in that aspect. That's only comparing them as Mary Sues. This proves nothing on whether somebody ripped off somebody else. All this proves is that they're both not Mary Sues. And mind you, this is a large chunk of the video. You spend so long trying to determine whether these characters were Mary Sues or not, that it actually takes away from the video. This YouTube title right here, Did Amy Rose Rip Off a Sally Acorn, is extremely misleading. Because you barely compared anything aside from super specific Mary Sue traits, which stem from an argument that came from fan girls that's barely even actually valid. Look, Groovy K2000, I'm not trying to invalidate the hard work you put into this video, but these arguments are just, no offense here, they come off as Amy Rose biased. On top of being not very good. Like, dude, I'm sorry, but you can't even define wish fulfillment correctly. I'm sorry, man, but take an English class. At least browse TV tropes or something. Like, come on, dude. With that being said, it's safe to say that Amy is still somewhat of a different character from Sally. However, she's a lot closer to being Sally than her old personality would be. You know, with a title like, Did Amy Rose Steal From Sally Acorn? I was kind of hoping for a more definitive answer. At the end of the day, we can conclude these two characters are different. Personally, I like the idea of Amy maturing, and at some point she would really, really have to because it would show character development and growth. But the issue is that there is no actual character development for Amy. I said this earlier and I will say it again, Amy Rose should have had a leadway development arc. But they didn't do that, they just switched her personality around because people found her annoying. And yet this actually hurts the character because now she went from being memorable and having an actual appeal to literally just woman character. Now, I'm personally not a fan of Amy Rose as a character. She's honestly my least favorite. I always found her annoying and obnoxious, or at least I used to, but now I have to go back on that. Because at least old Amy had a personality that was memorable. She had something that stood her out from the rest of the crowd. But now, once again, she's literally just the female character. Yeah, she's the leader now, but there's nothing that makes her stand out from a Blaze the Cat or anything. Yeah, she's not annoying anymore, but that annoying fangirl was what stood her out from the Princess Peaches of the universe. Nowadays, Amy Rose is nothing more than a slightly tougher mini mouse. And that's kinda sucky in my opinion. I take a memorable character over a boring one. But I do wish the writers of the Sonic comics fleshed this out some more, instead of instantly making her this way without build-up. But that's just my opinion. And that's what I'm trying to say. However, I think this is way bigger of an issue than you probably think it is. This out of nowhere character change, this out of nowhere completely different character from the original Amy, is a change more out of obligation and without build up rather than an actual character arc. If we got to explore why Amy Rose changed, I would be more open to it. But literally, we did not get that. All we got was a shitty ass marketing video saying saying that she's changed and matured. Like, come on, dude, put more effort into it. Welcome to the Sonic the Hedgehog franchise. We can take requests, but not put any effort into it. Do you like Amy's new personality? Do you think it still resembles Sally's? Let me know in the comment section down below. And thank you for watching. Once again, I don't want to invalidate this guy's opinion. He has the right to have it, and he's probably inexperienced with these type of videos, and I don't want to put that too much on him. However, this video on its own, and in my honest opinion, this ain't it, Chief.
Once again, in conclusion, this is not a very good take. There is information here that is blatantly incorrect, and it really seems like this guy is giving Amy Rose way too much leniency. Now, personally, while I don't think Ian Flynn tried to make Amy Rose exactly like Sally, it really seems like he tried to make her a lot more independent in an attempt to create a rebound character, without understanding that Sally Acorn fans don't like Amy Rose all that much. Furthermore, Ian Flynn does have a history of attempting to sabotage Sally's character, including for no actual reason trying to make her bisexual and in love with Nicole. So if that doesn't imply something, I don't know what does. But anyways, overall, yeah man, this really was not a good take. But I can tell GroovyK2000 is a young creator, at least in this field that he's doing, and we all have bad takes every once in a while, so I'll give him some leniency. But yeah, that's what I think. If you like this video, be sure to like down below, and if you enjoy this type of content, be sure to subscribe. I love you all, stay safe, and I will see you guys on the next Dumbsville video. Just saw that a black man and took his shoes. Customize my AR like a Black Ops 2. Just scammed a white kid out of some Gorilla Glue. I don't want to fuck this bitch, she smell like poo-poo.